Heart of Darkness. My mum has a new boyfriend. He's called Jeff. I'm listening as he explains. I didn't have to pay because I made her orgasm. I'm nine. Jeff looks at me and then at my mother. I don't know which of us he's trying to impress, but he's proud. Jeff is using the word prostitute in the easy way people did back then. If you say prostitute now, someone in the vicinity will be quick to correct you. They'll explain how the term reduces a sex worker's humanity and encourages stigma. Jeff didn't know that, and nor did I. She said she doesn't usually come with customers, but because I made her come, she couldn't accept any money off me. My mum had told me previously, in a private conversation, that Jeff had quite a small penis, and if you're wondering how that's relevant, ditto, mate, ditto. After Jeff had gone home the next day, Mum explained to me that prostitutes never orgasmed with their clients. They just pretended because of the fragile male ego. She told me that there was no way a prostitute wouldn't charge because they were excellent businesswomen and this was their livelihood. I apologise that my mum is saying prostitute as well. She's in the past when people didn't think about what they were saying. She would absolutely say sex worker nowadays. But sometimes sex worker isn't the correct language either. If a person has been trafficked, if they are a child, if they are unable to give consent, they ain't working. We have to be careful with language because it creates the world. I recently heard a true crime podcast describe a woman being kidnapped and forced into sex work. I'm sure you're aware that you can't be forced to work. That's slavery. And when sex is involved, that's rape. I've been asked to keep the introduction light, so (laughs) shruggy winky emoji. 28 years later, I heard a comedian talking about Puntanet. It's trip advisor for prostitutes, she joked, and then missed her bus home thanks to the queue waiting to tell her, we call them sex workers now. I went on Puntanet when I got home. It was mostly men discussing the parking restrictions outside sex workers' houses. These men are breaking the law by paying for sex, but they're only worried about traffic wardens. Puntanet's main page is basic and white, like your dad, with blue and black writing. There are no images. I felt safe to browse. There are reviews and message threads. I read a man's complaint about a woman's body odour and wanted to correct his spelling mistakes. I read a review that bemoaned that a woman didn't smile enough. I thought this was funny. Men sometimes tell women to smile in the street or in a shop queue. Being told to smile has never made anyone want to. Do the men who say it know how much it pisses women off and that's why they do it? I know it's not all men who do this, but it only takes a few busy men to mean it happens on a daily slash weekly basis to all women. Men don't tell other men to smile. They'd get punched. Telling another man to smile would insult his status. It would suggest he's there to please you, that he's decorative. Telling a woman to smile does the same thing, but men aren't scared of women's punches. Hang on. Yes, sorry, women can be aggressors. Yes, some women hit men. This is not a book about how women are always victims and men are always perpetrators. When I was 16, my mum had a different boyfriend. It was a complicated situation. He was married. Judge if you must. I certainly did. He would turn up at my house covered in what his wife had thrown at him. His shirt stained with food or smeared with condiments, the marks of her fingers on his face and neck. My mum would be kind to him, which disgusted me, obviously. His wife was a policewoman. She tracked his car. She broke into our house. She dragged him out of bed and beat him in front of my mum and sister. The people who are brutal and scary are created by more than biology. So... What I should have said above is, men aren't automatically scared of women's punches. The result of evolution is that women, in general, are, on average, smaller and weaker than men. But it feels very sexist to say it, like I'm criticising my own gender, like I'm ignoring all the big strong women in the world and all the tiny men. No rule about men and women is actually a rule. It also sounds transphobic, or if not phobic, then at least trans-ignorant. Discussing sex and biology means stamping with large, insensitive boots over the fragile flower that is individual human experience. There will be a lot of caveats in this book, 
and one tiny bloke. Me?